guys, it's Queen Nija, and in today's video, I will be reacting to Rain to episode 8 of Beastars. Let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. Right. What up? <laughs> All right, what the hell gonna happen today? Legacy and Louise gonna fight? I mean, I really want to see that. Goddamn it! Like, I, I need. <laughs> ah! Oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah, because you need to be very careful. Or, you know, one minute you're alive and the next minute you're just gone. I hope so too, but I feel like there's going to be drama. Because you, should, you can't have a festival or anything without drama. Wasn't the lion mayor in like Zootopia and some shit? Makes a point right there. Oh my god. Huh? Yeah, but there was somebody over there. I don't know if that was Legacy. boy. Boys like that too. Like, oh my god. That's why you need a man. <laughs> a man is so much better than a boy. Aww. Because of the fact that she would love her and you want to be beside her and you want to be your knight in shining armor. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so cute. What's wrong? Was that the last one? It's okay. At least you're together. We're not separated.
I know a girl just, you know, takes off her clothes and kind of throws herself at you. <laughs> yeah, because you see her as someone you want to be in a relationship with. Unlike Louise, who's like, no, let's just fuck. <laughs> Well, of course, you have to watch her back no matter what. It's not the same for him. It's true. She was saving it exactly like race. Oh, God. Wait, please. It's just a misunderstanding. They're friends. They're just arguing. Huh? Uh huh? Is he going to pick her up? Who oh, he's going to run in front! Ah! <laughs> oh, you, you feel like a man now! <laughs> oh. But it just matters how she feels. Relax your breathing. Calm down. Uh, are you using that as symbolism as yourself? I mean, because in a way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you gotta remember, she may be a little defensive on it. Yeah, ain't that funny, because you talking to him right now, boo? Right on my line. Mm -hmm. There might not be a day where he may never tell her about that. <laughs> yeah. That would really be your deal breaker, but you have to wait until you think it's time. 
Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we want to talk about why. I mean, well. complicated girls and boys you know both of them are in love with the same freaking girl and you know they're gonna find out and they're both gonna kick each other's ass for it i can't wait personally do you know mm -hmm. Hmm. Like a kill. Of course. And like is he as blind as a motherfucking bat? <laughs> Yeah, in a way, you're kind of trying to make the guys attractive to you. One dude that did that to me, <laughs> like, during a play, and I was just like, huh? Just speaking the truth, though. No. Oh, we all know you in love with Legacy, bitch. Well, 
um, Juno, um, I love your attitude, boo. Like, don't get me wrong, but, uh, come get it. Exactly. We sure do. No, it's not wrong. Yeah, because I think like that too. Yeah, I mean, because, as I said, he's in love with somebody else. You're the only one. Because he in love with somebody else. And you can't. <laughs> You'll see it. You just need to look at him. Look into his eyes. And it's like that. No, Juno, it's not that. It's just he's in love with someone else. <laughs> yeah, but then you gotta think about all them faces that he shows her. Oh, yeah, you guys can't see. Yeah, but then that's also good for, you know, carnivals to come up in here and kill some of y'all. I'm just saying, but, you know, that probably ain't going to happen, right? None of y'all ain't got a cell phone? Kario. God damn it. And Juno gonna be stupid. And eventually Juno gonna sneak off or some shit. There, there's... Yeah. Girl, seriously? Behind a tree?
Oh, fuck. Oh, it is just. And Juno's there. Yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, fuck. Yeah, this is literally this episode in a nutshell was kind of about race. Because in a way, sometimes, ever since episode one, I've kind of been looking at Legacy and Haru, thinking if Haru was a white woman, or, yeah, usually white, and Legacy was black, and how having, being in a interracial relationship, a lot of people still to this day don't even like it. Me, I support it, because me, I'm a, I have weaknesses for white guys, and specifically... And you have a guy, but white guys might also a weakness. But, um, I'm happy that Juno finally gets to see that shit. But, at the same goddamn time, during this blackout, and the fact is that freaking Legacy was doing, like, everything that he could to look for her, and then finally, here's her, and what's the first name she says that comes out of her motherfucking mouth? Louise. Bitch, you serious? Like, no, you just fucked it up for yourself. You know you fucked up. I know you fucked up. Everybody else who probably watched this episode between tonight and tomorrow knows you just fucked up. You fucked up big motherfucking time, and you got nobody else to blame but yourself. I get it. Yeah, you know, you immediately assume that a, a tall person coming towards you is Louise. And shit, but like you could tell, like right after she said Luis's name, Legacy was like taken back. He was like, "Oh shit!" Like, mm -hmm, there is something that, like, right there. I mean, between last week's episode and this week's episode, just that sexual tension between, not even the sexual tension between Legacy, um, uh, Luis and Haru. It's more of yes, they 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 do with the nasty. They you know, um, uh, fuck buddies and shit like that, and that you know. One, I'm guessing Louise still, is going to be in love with the other, but the fact is that she's still, she's the one that, um, she depends on him a lot. She's the one that wants him to save her necessarily and stuff. And so I want Haru to be this, in a way Haru is very independent, but I think because of the fact is with the blackout and because she is a, the type of animal that can't really see at night, unlike a dog or, um any type of nocturnal animal, no, not nocturnal, oh my god, I'm getting confused, any type of animal that could see in the dead of night that has night vision eyes and versus an animal that doesn't, it's a lot easier while the other one's like, okay, yeah, I got a coward for here. I do love the fact that, yes, they, you know, in a way put aside their differences and protected everybody else. That was really sweet because you never know what could have happened. Somebody could have came up, snatched one of them, and immediately killed them on the side. But, mm, Somebody was right about that drama coming because, like I said, you can't really have um, a festival, a birthday party, a gathering with people or whatever without having drama. The Juno situation, like, she now realizes that, yeah, Legacy is in love with Haru and how, in a way, she's like, yeah, this is impossible. But she's also looking at it, it's like, oh, it's forbidden. Like, you shouldn't, like, we've all been known to say, let's kind of stay in our own groups and shit like that. Let's not go and, you know, um, be in love with someone who does not look like anybody. Any, anyone like us, whether it's skin color, um, the sex, whatever, no matter what, that's what she's kind of looking at. She's like the typical person of, I, a everyday person who's like, I, this is what I believe. I don't believe in same-sex marriages. I don't believe in uh, mixing races with other races. Typical things like that. While the mo um, while what it is in modern day issues is it's okay to like have a be in a swirl type relationship, whether it's an interracial relationship, um, a same-sex and opposite sex relationship. Those are the type of people like myself who support it or want to be in it because, like I said, you know, my thing is white boys is my weakness. But I mean. 
I feel like what Juno might say or do to Legacy next week, she's going to probably want to take him to the side and literally kind of talk about him and say, hey, I saw you with Haru. I know what you're thinking about. I can already see it. But you know, you can't be with her. Like, it's just for Britain. You need to be with me. That's the only way we're all going to be able to make happy. The fact that this girl also wants to be the next B-star, like, that, it surprised me. But then at the same time, it didn't because of the fact is I was like, out of any girl character, she could really be one because it seems like she has a lot that she wants to prove. I mean, like, going back to the point where it looked like she was, um, mm, not attracting Louise. It was more, like, because I got to put it as, in the, as a way of, of how it kind of happened to me. Okay. So, in high school, I think I was in my first year, and there was this play that we were all opted immediately to watch where, like, a whole bunch of students from, like, drama class and uh, did stuff together and there was this one guy and he picked out like i'm on the first goddamn row and i could literally see this dude and you know how sometimes they say like uh your um drama teachers or whatever say find somebody in the audience and look them kind of dead face in the eyes so it seems like you're talking to them and you're trying to attract them to themselves that's what he was kind of doing to me and that's what like in a way legacy not legacy louise wants juno to do especially with her dance where it's like you're trying to make these guys happy and smile and have a good time but in a way you're trying to kind of get one of these characters and one of these guys you know to also be attracted to you even though yes she's in love with freaking legacy and of course you know he ain't gonna find, i mean you know legacy legacy and he's just a good boy he's a good doggo he just don't know. He he too much and too busy in love with Haru. But now that she's seen that ish, I, I feel like next week or in the next up and coming weeks, it's gonna get a hell of a lot worse. Like something is going to take the turn for the worst. I don't know when. I don't know how. It could be next week. It could be two weeks from now. It could be at the end of the fucking month of December going into 2020, but it's fucking coming. And when it does, I'm just gonna be sitting over here probably eating some popcorn or drinking some water, maybe having like a shot of crown or like having a jello shot or some shit. And I'm just gonna be looking at that computer and looking at you like, mm hmm, I told you so. And I'm just gonna go back and do what I'm doing. But yeah, I mean, it was a damn good episode. It's just like, it's very tense. And you can feel that with some of these characters. Like, hell, even with Bill scratching, you know, Louise, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? What the hell is wrong with you? Out of nowhere. But like, yeah, it, it's. Mm. Cut that tension with a knife. Just drop that pin and just be like, yeah, there it is. It's just so high and it's going to get higher and worse. And it's just going to like explode. So many people are going to be like angry at each other. I, I literally have no idea what the fuck could happen. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction to be towards episode eight of Beastars. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. <clears throat> also. Uh, subscribe to my channel I make videos every single day join the magical squad and of course I will see you guys officially all next Saturday for episode 9 bye guys